everyone. My name is Divya Mather, and I will be helping lead today's webinar. I'm project coordinator for the California Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Project, Cali VIP. Thank you for joining today's webinar presentation to learn more about Cali VIP's latest project, the Central Coast Incentive Project, which will be launching on October 30th. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. Throughout the presentation, there will be opportunities for attendees to answer poll questions that will appear on your screen. Please choose one answer per question, and each poll question will be open for a few seconds. We'll also be leaving time at the end of the presentation to take questions, which may be submitted via the question box in the webinar toolbar or live. If you'd like to ask your question live, please use the hand raised feature on the webinar toolbar to enter the queue. We'll be we will be answering live questions in the order of hands being raised. When it's your turn, we'll unmute your mic and you'll receive a prompt that you've been unmuted. You'll then be able to ask your questions to our panelists. When asking your question, please include your name and your organization. Once you've asked your question, we'll place you on mute again. Please keep in mind that microphones pick up everything, including background noises. Out of consideration for other listeners, we ask that you keep your surroundings in mind when deciding to raise your hand. And with that, let's dive in. Today's presentation will begin by covering the need for electric vehicle infrastructure in California. We'll then dive into the Central Coast Incentive Project, covering the rebate specifics and eligibility requirements to qualify for these incentives before walking through the application itself. We'll wrap up today's session by opening the floor to questions and feedback from our attendees and encourage you to stay online through the entirety of the presentation. Across the globe, EV sales among consumers are rising, thanks in part to the introduction of new EV models. Currently, there are 150 EV models available, with that number set to surpass 240 available models by 2021. In the U.S., California is a leader in EV sales, selling almost double the number of ATVs as other top EV selling states do combined. There are a number of contributing factors that go into this high-performing market. Dealers statewide offer over 30 different models from popular manufacturers, with others announcing future plans to go electric. Trends in electrification aren't just among homeowners and eco-conscious folks. More businesses, organizations, and agencies are opting to go electric. We're seeing this trend in public fleet ownership of electric fleets, government agencies that own electric fleets, and leading businesses that are electrifying. With these increases in sales, California is on track to meet the goal of 1.5 million EVs on the road by 2025, if not before. If trends are any indication, EVs are the future of transportation. With an in increasing demand for electric vehicles, the need for electric vehicle charging becomes crucial. Luckily for California, Cali VIP is prepared to support this demand. Before we go any further, we're going to launch our first poll question, what is your industry type? A poll prompt should appear on your screen. Please select the answer that most closely aligns with your industry. Please take the next few seconds to answer. Great, the poll is now closed. Thank you to everyone who participated. It seems the majority of our attendees today are other than some of the choices that we've provided. Thank you for participating. Accessible and diverse EV models are only one component of driving electrification. Accessible infrastructure is an equally critical requirement to help transition gas guzzlers off the road. That's where Cali VIP comes in. Cali VIP is funded through the California Energy Commission's Clean Transportation Program, formerly known as the Alternative and Renewable Fuel and Technology Program, ARS-BTP. The incentive project receives up to $100 million annually and source funding is available up through 2024. With an increasing need for electric vehicles, the need for electric vehicle charging infrastructure rises. Cali VIP's goals help mitigate this need by implementing regional incentive projects throughout California to address the need for EV charging. The goal of the Clean Transportation Program is to introduce greater accessibility to clean and alternative fuel transportation options within California by implementing incentive projects throughout the state 
providing a mechanism that improves relevant processes and providing convenient access to charging infrastructure. This program helps uphold the state's climate change policies, including less petroleum dependence and greater decarbonization. Now let's shift into more details about the Central Coast Incentive Project. This project provides level two and DC fast charger rebates in Monterey, San Benito, and Santa Cruz counties. Starting October 30th, organizations will be able to apply for rebates for businesses, nonprofits, workplaces, multi-unit dwellings, and public facilities. Rebates are available on a first come first served basis and certain areas are eligible for different charger rebate amounts. For more specific project details, please visit the Central Coast webpage link at the bottom of this slide. The second poll question on your screen is, which county are you most likely to apply for a rebate? The three options are Monterey County, San Benito County, or Santa Cruz County. Please select one of the options on the screen. We will keep this poll open for a few seconds longer. This poll is now closed. Thank you for everyone who participated. It seems most of our attendees are interested in rebates for Monterey County, with seconds coming into Santa Cruz County. The Central Coast Incentive Project has determined $7 million in available incentive funding for Level 2 and DC Fast Chargers. Available funding by county provides Monterey County with approximately $3 million, San Benito County with $560,000, and Santa Cruz County with $3.4 million. The division between Level 2 and DC Fast Charger funding is also listed. Available rebates can also be broken up by charger type and region. Level 2 chargers and general market sites can receive up to $5,000 per connector with an additional $1,000 if the site is a multi-unit dwelling. DC fast charging and general market sites can receive up to $70,000 per charger. If a site is located within a disadvantaged community, level two charges can receive up to 5,500 per connector with an additional 1,000 if the site is a multi-unit dwelling. For DAC DC fast charging, a site can receive up to $80,000 per charger. For the Central Coast Incentive Project, a disadvantaged community is classified as being in the top 50% of the Cal EnviroScreen 3.0 census tract. To qualify for a Central Coast Incentive Project rebate, an applicant must be the owner of the site or have authorization from the site owner to install. An applicant must also be a business, nonprofit organization, or government entity with California ties. To apply for rebates, you don't have to be a site owner. Service providers are also eligible to apply for Cali VIP incentives on behalf of the site owner. All chargers that applicants can choose from are listed on the, on the eligible equipment list that Cali VIP maintains. All level two EV chargers are required to be Energy Star certified, not just committed to becoming Energy Star certified. Additionally, Recent CARB regulations will begin requiring credit card readers on new charging equipment after 1-1-2022, and there will be a 10-year 2033 requirement to add credit card readers on existing chargers that were installed before 1-1-2022. We've now reached the third poll question, what kind of charger type are you interested in applying for? Please select one of the options on the screen. You can choose DC Fast Charger, level two charger, or both, which would be considered a combo application. This poll is now closed, thanks to all who participated. These next two slides outline the eligible site types and installation site requirements for eligible chargers. Eligible site types for DC fast charging include commercial properties, hospitals, airports, and more. Please note that to apply for curbside charging, the charger must be installed and located within the same block as another eligible site type on this list. Eligible site types for level two charging include commercial sites, workplaces, multi-unit dwellings, public facilities, and light duty fleets. Similar to DCFC, level two curbside chargers must be installed and located within the same block as another eligible site type on this list. Please note that the chargers must be shared use. They cannot be dedicated to a single driver or vehicle and must be available to all. 
Please note that there are limitations on funds reserved per application and limitations on eligible quantity of chargers. The maximum funds reserved amount for any one application in Monterey County or Santa Cruz County is $320,000 and $100,000 in San Benito County. DC Fast chargers can be eligible for rebates for one to four chargers and level two chargers are eligible for rebates for one to 10 connectors. An applicant may wish to install additional chargers, but Cali VIP will only rebate up to these limitations. Listed here are eligible costs that can be covered by Cali VIP incentives. Most costs cannot be incurred until after an application is submitted and funds have been reserved. Design, engineering, and utility service costs are eligible if incurred after July 31st, 2019, but at the applicant's own risk until funds are reserved. While many costs can be covered through Cali VIP, there are a few costs that are ineligible to be covered through the project. Some ineligible costs include permit fees, solar panels, and costs paid by other rebate or incentive programs. Please contact the Cali VIP project team before you apply if you are unsure if a cost is covered by the project. This page outlines the steps that occur between applying and receiving your rebate for DC Fast Chargers. The first step of course is to ensure that you are an eligible applicant and that the installation site is a qualified site. Step two includes uploading the site verification form within five days of initial filing of the application. The application will be canceled if it's not uploaded within five days. There are no extensions for uploading the site verification form. Step two is also apply online prior to purchasing and installing the EV chargers. Step five is applying for a milestone payment, which requires at least a permit and design engineering invoice, but can include any other eligible costs incurred after funds have been reserved. For DC Fast Charger and Combo applications, an applicant has 450 days from the funds reserve date to submit all documents for final payment. The process for applying for level two rebates is very similar to applying for DC Fast Charger rebates. The main difference between the two is that level two charger applications are not eligible for milestone payments. Only DCFC and combo applications are eligible for milestone payments. For level two only, an applicant has 270 days to upload all documents for final payment. The fourth and final poll question on your screen is what kind of property are you most interested in bringing EV charging to? Please select one of the options on the screen. The poll is now closed. Thank you to all who participated. Here are some next steps to take before the Central Coast applications are live. It is recommended that you create a Cali VIP account in advance. For non-site owners, the most important document to submit is the site verification form. To ensure that you're ready to go on October 30th, we've provided the site verification form on the project website so you can access it ahead of time and get the needed signatures. As mentioned earlier, the site verification form is required to be submitted within five days of the application submission. If it is not submitted within five days, that application will be canceled and you will have to submit a new application, which may drop your position in the queue. For the Central Coast Incentive Project, Cali VIP is partnering with Monterey Bay Community Power. If the installation site receives power from Monterey Bay Community Power, you will need to access your 11-digit account number and account holder name and enter it during the application process. This information can be found on your MBCP utility bill. For questions regarding your utility bill or customer status, please contact Monterey Bay Community Power at programs at mbcp.org. We've now completed the overview of the project requirements and eligibility criteria for the Central Coast Incentive Project. Now we will transition into a walkthrough of the, of the project application. We want to ensure that you have as much information as you need to be successful in the application process when you're ready to apply for your chargers. I will now transition the presentation over to Nicole Appenzeller, who will be walking us through the application. Great, thanks, Didia. 
My name is Nicole Appenzeller, and I work at the Center for Sustainable Energy as a project manager for Cali VIP. I'm going to walk through the application process today to give you an idea of what you can expect when you're ready to apply. The first step to submit a Cali VIP application is to create a, an account on CaliVIP.org. For new applicants, please click the login button at the top right of the screen to create a new account. Enter in all of the required fields to be set up with your new account. If you've previously applied to Cali VIP, you can log into your existing account to submit a new application. But if you're not already an account holder, we encourage you to create an account today so it's one less thing you have to do when you're ready to apply. Once you've created an account, you're on your way to applying and submitting an application. The Central Coast Incentive Project will start accepting applications on October 30th. On this day, the Apply Now button will be available on the project landing page. And once you click the Apply Now button, you'll be taken to the first step of the application process, which is equipment selection. This page is where you will enter charger technology information, as well as site installation information. Starting with the first section, you will be asked to select your installation site type. The installation site type determines which chargers you'll be eligible to apply for, either level two only or both level two and DC fast chargers. For example, if you're applying for a multi-unit dwelling site or a workplace, you're only eligible to apply for level two charger incentive. Whereas if you're applying for a commercial site, which a lot of you indicated you're interested in applying for, you'll be eligible to apply for level two and DC fast charging. The next section is selecting the equipment you plan to install at the site. Here you will be required to choose the charger make and model, the connectors per charger, quantity, and the charger or installation type. You can also click add another item if you'd like to add more chargers or if you'd like to add a different eligible technology type. And lastly, the final section on the page is for network provider information. And if you're unsure of who your network provider will be at the time of application, you can select not sure or other. But this is just a friendly reminder that we do require you to set up a contract for network services for approval of your rebate. Once you're ready to proceed, click continue at the bottom of the page. The second step in the application process is the project requirements page. This page details all site, applicant, and equipment requirements. As part of this step, please review the page in full before proceeding down to the bottom of the page and accepting the project requirements. The bottom of the page asks you to review a series of listed statements and confirm that all information provided in your application is accurate and truthful. Please through, read through all items carefully and click accept and continue when you are ready to proceed. Once the project requirements have been accepted, you'll be taken to the third step of the application, the submit application page. In this first section, you will enter the details of the organization, including applicant type, tax identification number, site ownership and site ownership information. It is important to note that all of this information should relate to the intended rebate recipient. So for example, if you are an electric vehicle service provider applying on behalf of a business and you want the business to receive the rebate, you need to be prepared with the business name, their tax identification number, and their site owner status. Please ensure that the correct rebate recipient is entered on your application. The rebate recipient cannot be changed after your application is submitted. And in order to have a different rebate recipient, you would be required to submit a new application and have a new spot in the application queue. Also for our organization names, an application will be processed more quickly if the name is entered as it is registered with the California Secretary of State Business Search. And if you have any questions about that or are worried about your name, Please get in touch with us in advance of application submittal so you can have a streamlined and smooth application process. At the end of this section, you'll be asked to enter your contact information for the project. Please enter your preferred contact information here so if we have any specific questions about your application, we can get in touch with this contact person via the phone. Once those fields are completed, scroll down on the application form and 
answer the following declaration. For this section, we ask that you, you answer these questions from the perspective of the rebate recipient. Please review all declarations carefully and enter in truthful answers. Uh, this section is the organist information for the organization name that you've listed above. Continuing on from the organization address is the mailing address and installation address section. We use the mailing address to mail your Cali VIP rebate payment, so it's very important for you to list your preferred mailing address here. If the mailing address is the same as the organization address, just check the box and move on to the installation address section. The installation street address must be entered correctly. To ensure placeholder addresses aren't used, no changes to the installation site address are allowed, and the applicant will need to submit a new application for a new installation address. And if you have any questions about address, again, just like organization name, please reach out to us in advance. So if you're thinking of a parking lot or some other site that might not have an address yet, please reach out to us or please enter the address for that new construction site. This section is a continuation of the installation address section. Please ensure that the installation site is within one of the three eligible counties, Monterey, San Benito, or Santa Cruz County. The application will receive an error and will not be successfully submitted if the installation address is not within one of these three counties. Please also enter the cross streets of the installation address. This it becomes more important for curbside charging. And for curbside charging, we ask that you ensure that these cross streets are accurate in relation to which block the charger is planned to be installed. This next section requests more information on installation details. Please enter the nearest business or organization that will be benefiting from the chargers. We want to understand who's going to be benefit, benefiting from your installation site. So for example, if the chargers are being installed at a retail shopping center, but intended to benefit Target, please note Target uh, in this field. If it's a multi-unit dwelling, feel free to list the name of the complex or the associated business. And for curbside charging, please enter the nearest business or organization for the charger. The next question around affordable housing is displayed only for multi-unit dwelling sites. So if you're applying as a multi-unit dwelling, please re be prepared to answer this question. And this is part of our data collection just to inform our project and understand if sites are applying as affordable housing. The same logic goes for tribal lands. We want to understand if a proposed installation will be installed on tribal lands. So we've provided a definition and are collecting information here on that site. Also, please input the number of parking stalls in the parking lot or structure associated with the site, as well as the total number of parking stalls that are planned to be dedicated to EV charging. Now, these answers will not determine your eligibility for Cali VIP, but we ask that you provide your best estimate so that we can inform our research project. Thank you. Additional information is requested around the site, including if there's an existing need for the EV chargers at your proposed site, and if so, what type of existing need there is. We also ask about your applicant um, organization's relationship to the site, and whether or not the EV chargers will be publicly accessible. And the public access questions will be dependent on what type of chargers you're applying for. In addition, we'll be asking if you're planning to charge a fee for charging at your chargers, and who will own and operate the EV chargers. Again, these are informational questions that we're posing to inform our research projects and will not determine your eligibility. We just ask that you answer honestly and, and truthfully for all of these questions. And uh, the final question relates to our partners at Monterey Bay Community Power. We want to know if your site is provided power by Monterey Bay Community Power. If it is, um, we'll be asking you for account number and account holder information. And if you're unsure, we have help text guiding you to your utility bill so you can see exactly where on your bill you can collect that information. 
you can click through to an FAQ or check out our FAQ that's available on the site now to identify your sample bill and identify this information in advance. So you're not running into any challenges at the end of your application form. Once you've entered in all information correctly, you're ready to submit your application. But once you press submit, if there's any missing or incomplete information, you will receive an error message at the top of the page directing you to take action. If you are unable to correct that information for some reason, please reach out to staff and do not close out your application form so we can guide you through making any corrections so you, that you can successfully submit your application. But once you hit submit and successfully provide all correct information, um, you'll see the next slide. Once you see this page, congratulations. That means you've successfully applied for Cali VIP and we've received your application. On this application dashboard, you will find more information on the status of your application and any requested next steps. You will also receive an email notification providing you with your application number and guiding you through any next steps that are required. This is where you will also be uploading any required supporting documents. So, for example, in, in this image, we see the site verification form. So if you had applied as a non-site owner, this is the point where we would be collecting that required site verification form. As Vivia mentioned, you only have five days to submit that form or your application will be canceled. So this is the area where you can choose that file and upload it for submission. Uh, one key thing that's important to take away is once you've uploaded the correct file and you're ready to submit your documents, you'll need to press the Submit Documents button at the bottom of the screen. That will ensure that we receive those documents and we'll be ready to review them. At any point in the application process, you'll be able to access this page by going to the My Account button at the top right of the page. Um, there you'll see an overview of all of your applications across all Cali VIP projects and can click in through the application number to see the status of any of your active applications. On this page, you'll see the application status, uh, the upload document category, and um, can also manage and uh, manage collaborators. So if you have a partner on your project who will actually be doing the document upload, you can manage your collaborators and invite them to collaborate on an application. This will ensure that you and any other teammates can collaborate and work to upload and successfully complete the application for Cali VIP. So to wrap up the presentation, before we jump into questions, um, I wanted to review some of the key takeaways and important information to consider. For the Central Coast and Center Project, we'll be launching on October 30th, and applications will be available on that day. Eligible properties in Monterey, San Benito, and Santa Cruz counties can apply for Level 2 and DC Fast Charger rebate. It is recommended that non-site owners complete the site verification form in advance of applying. An applicant may begin incurring purchase and installation costs once you've received confirmation from the Cali VIP team that funds have been reserved for your application. Any design and engineering costs that are incurred prior to your fund reserve date are at your own risk. As with any application, please double check your information, especially the rebate recipient and installation address field. These two pieces of information cannot be changed after your, after your application is submitted, so please ensure that they are correctly entered when you apply. In addition, we want to make easy charging accessible and affordable with Cali VIP, and part of that assistance comes through complimentary technical assistance that's available to all applicants to help jumpstart your EV charger installation process. If this is your first time completing an installation uh, or you need support, we offer up um, complimentary technical assistance and you can contact Cali VIP staff at any point for assistance. We have the phone number and email address listed here and we will be providing this slide deck after this webinar. So if you need to access this information, it will be available in the future. So now we want to 
receive your questions and go through a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please use one of two methods. The first method is that you can use the question box feature on the control panel to submit questions. Please make sure to include your name and organization in the question. You can also use the hand raise feature on the control panel to voice your question aloud. If you choose this method when it's your turn, we will unmute your mic and you will be able to speak. After you've asked your question, we will meet you again and answer the question. Please include your name and organization when asking your question, and please be considerate of the sound in your room since we'll be picking up your mic. Now to start it off, we're gonna kick it off with um, live questions. So if you want to use the hand raise feature and have your mic unmuted, please click the hand raise feature now. Um, first question is from uh, Robert Kibrick. Uh, Robert, you've been unmuted. Okay. Uh I am with Temple Beth L in Aptos, um, California, which is in Santa Cruz County. And we are the largest reform congregation in the county. Um, we happen to be located across the street from a parking structure for the local community college. And so a, a long-term issue for our parking lot is to not have students from the community college parking there and taking up our parking spaces. And so we have a sign that says, you know, no, you know, uh, community college students are not to be using our parking lot. So in terms, how would that impact uh, any requirement for EV charging stations in our parking lot uh, to be publicly available? What's, what's the definition of, uh, of public availability and, and how would we address that issue? Um, so I'll take that question. Uh, this is Andy Hopkinson with the Center for STEM Honors. You're working on Cali VIP. Uh, Robert, um, if you're talking about level two electric vehicle chargers, um, you would be able to continue that restriction where you're not allowing general public to access the chargers, but just members of, of your your organization, your your congregation, if you will. Um, that's uh, that's quite possible. If you're talking about DC fast chargers. Um, those are intended to be available to um, the general public, and such a restriction would not be able to be um, put in place. Great. Um, so with that, uh, we'll take the next question. Um, John Taub, I apologize if I uh, mispronounce your last name. Um, you have been unmuted. Please feel free to ask your question. Hello, this is John Kalb from EV Charging Pros. I have many clients who require engineering um, in the planning and design process. They do not know whether they have enough load to manage three chargers, five chargers, eight chargers on their property, whether they need to upgrade their electrical capacity. Um, and so my organization provides planning and design services, which essentially helps them figure out what it's gonna take to get it done. And it seems to me in this process, the fees for my services that would be paid by a property owner would not be uh, allowed to be paid for until after the application process. Um, but the requirements to plan come prior to the application process. So I'd like to get a little bit more clarity about um, when you say that uh, design and planning fees um, are at the property owner's risk. Um, what does that really mean? And is there really a chance for those fees to be covered after, you know, that are incurred before the application to be paid for after the application has been submitted? Sure. Um, again, this is Andy Hopkinson with uh, Center for Sustainable Energy, um, and Cal IP. John, I um, appreciate the question. Um, and apologize, I wanted to introduce the other panelists that can answer questions uh, this morning as well. You've heard from uh, both Disney of Author and from Nicole Appenzeller, um, uh, project coordinator and project manager um, on Cali VIP. They'll be uh, assisting and answering questions as well. Um, Sage with Monterey Bay Community Power um, is available to answer um, questions. I'll go ahead and take this one, John. Um, if the design and engineering um, occurs 
before an application has been moved to a funds reserve status, any work on, um, but, but after the incentive project landing page um, is live, which has, has occurred, um, that those costs would remain at, um, at risk um, to, to the owner, to those um, who are incurring them. Um, if uh, the application is uh, subsequently filed and uh, subsequently moved into funds reserve because there's an availability of funds for that, um, then those costs would be eligible for the um, rebate. Um, the risk enters in that if the application was subsequently filed but determined ineligible or there were a lack of um, uh, incentive funds to fund that application, um, then there would be uh, no rebate available for those incurred costs. Um, any design engineering that occurs um, after an application has been um, uh, moved to a funds reserve status, funds have been held for it, um, those fees would be uh, eligible and a rebate could be received um, based on them. But I, I'm still a little confused because the very first thing in the application says, choose the EDSE equipment, choose how many. And my point is that the client may not know uh, whether it's four or six or 10 unless they've spent money to figure that out. And what I'm hearing is that you could make the application say, I want to go for 10. And once it was approved, then they could actually figure out and maybe it would turn out that they only could do two given their electrical infrastructure. So the cost to figure it out after they've submitted and held 10 would be okay. Uh, but the cost to figure it out prior to the application is at risk. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Um, taking the next question, we're going to go to Carlos Ferrado. Uh, we have unmuted you, Carlos. Please go ahead and ask your question. Make sure your self-muted is open. All right. Thank you. So I just had a question about the Monterey Bay Community Power customer ID number. So if a property is under construction and you don't have PG&E set up yet and you don't have a number, what would you enter instead? Hi. Thank you for your question. This is Sage from Monterey Bay Community Power. Um, we would be addressing that on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, so if you want to send me an email with some of the details, um, I will be the one monitoring the program's email address, um, but you certainly won't be penalized for having a new build um, that, you're, that you're wanting to install EV chargers at. So it, that wouldn't inf affect your application, we just want to make sure that, um, you know, if in fact there is, uh, you know, a meter going in there or there's a meter, um, you know, that's available that we have that information. So. Uh, feel free to send me an email, um, and we can we can um, address that question. Thank Does you. that answer your question? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so continuing on, the next um, we're going to take that from um, Ayman Wari. Um, Ayman, you're unmuted now. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so there's two questions. One is if I'm behind applying on behalf of my landlord uh, with the Monterey Bay PG&E number, do I need my landlord's number or mine? Because I could easily get mine, my landlord's, it might be a bit tough. I already got his in and everything else for that, but. Hi, so this is Sage. Um, so it sounds like you're a tenant at a multi-unit dwelling, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so you're applying on behalf of the of the organization. So um he's like I'm talking to him right now as I'm on like the phone with you guys sending messages back and forth. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So this is another one where you're welcome to to send me an email and I can um with the address and I can look it up. Uh that it just to make it available to everyone. Um, if you do have any specific questions, you can always send me an email with the, the site name and the address, um, and I can figure out which 
account number that you should um, apply with. Okay. Uh, so in this case, you would want the, um, the main account number, the kind of parent account, um, if possible. But if for some reason you aren't able to find that, I should be able to look it up on our internal system with um, your individual uh, PG&E account number. Okay. So hopefully that, that helps. Okay, yeah. And then my other question, uh, it's not going to be PG&E related. Uh, where exactly do I get the forms to get so my landlord can fill it out? Uh, I'm having trouble finding it on your site. You said it was already up. Oh, the uh, site host verification it. form? Oh, yeah. go ahead, Andy. Oh, no, please. Oh, so it's it's on the main page. Um, it's available for download. Uh, I don't think the site host verification form is the it uh, has a spot for the account number. Um, that's that's I separate. Have finding the site host verification form. I don't see it on the like the website. Like. Okay. Um, if you go to the main page and scroll down, you'll see a little box. To the right that says download, it's next to the section that says eligibility requirements. And uh, you'll see central post. Yeah, now I see it. Thank you very much. All right, perfect. Okay, uh, great. Well, we'll continue on with the questions and we'll go next to Jane Barr. Jane, you've been unmuted. Berg. Thank you so much for this program. We look forward to using it. Um, I have three questions and I just want to check to make sure you're hearing me. You're hearing you. Thank you. So the first question on page 35 of the um, webinar, it um, gave a description for affordable housing that tied it to HUD. Um, it seemed like with section eight, not all affordable housing is going to have um, HUD funding. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can get that um, redefined so that it will include um, uh, federal tax credits and, and local state funding, um, which does restrict affordable housing. Um, also on the um, application, it asks for applicant info. Um, while my company is a nonprofit and that it will act as a general partner in a limited partnership, the limited partnerships are, are um, private entities and I didn't really quite see um, how to how to mark a box for that? So if if we could um, you know have some conversation about that later. Um, next, for affordable housing construction, this program would be wonderful if, if we are approved for the funding that we can show it in our application to the state for state funding and tax credits. However, the time period that you allow uh, once you're approved in the application and to complete this is too short a time period. Um, our, our construction itself may take um, 14, 18, 20, 22 months. And it seems to me that these would be one of the last installations um, or close to the end of the construction period. Plus when we apply for funds, that's typically um, a year, year and a half beforehand. So I'm wondering in the case of affordable housing, if, if the timeline can be a little different um, and then, and just, um, based upon approval of funding. Um, um, and, and lastly, I, I might be the only one, but I don't understand the difference between level two versus DC fast um, methods of, of charging. So um, I, I, I don't know if there are others who don't understand it, but I, I wasn't sure what the difference was to know what to apply for. Sure, um, Jane, you've got a lot of questions there and I think some observations that we are happy to um, uh, happy to entertain and have um, additional uh, discussion on. Um, to your last um, point, um, under the resources tab on the Cali DIT site, there is an electric vehicle, um, uh, electric vehicle infrastructure 101 um, that gives a, a, a decent uh, brief overview of the comparison of level two versus DC fast charging. Um, there are other resources there that you and others may find helpful as well as understanding um, uh, the differences in charging and, and making some determinations. In addition to that, there is, under getting started, a link to Cali VIP Connect that might connect you with organizations such as um, we had an earlier caller, uh, EV Charge Bros, that mentioned um, they provide uh, services to help those who are looking uh, for what type of charging uh, that Cali VIP Connect 
has a number of um, service providers on there who may be able to help you with, uh, with that specifically. What I'd like to do, Jane, is given your other observations, and I think the need for additional um, dialogue on that, um, it would be to uh, have a follow-up discussion with you. Um, if you would reach out to uh, reach out uh, to us, uh, you can see the email on the screen um, if you're still on at this uh, at this point. Central Dash Coast Dash Cali AP at EnergyCenter.org. Um, and that would allow us to set up time to um, go into detail with you on um, some of your questions, concerns, and um, discussion. I will note for um, all the callers um, on the line that the performance period for the level two is defined as nine months, and for the DC fast charging is defined as 15 months. We're not changing that at this point. Um, if there were any programmatic changes that were made, um, we would send that uh, information out um, to all who are signed up to receive um, news. Uh, and information on Cali VIP. So if you have not already done so, I would encourage um, each of you to um, go ahead and register to receive updates. Uh, that can be found in a banner on the bottom of any of the Cali VIP pages. Okay, um, we'll move on to the next um, uh, caller with a question. That is Chris Stat. Um, Chris, you've been unmuted. Uh, yeah, hey guys, thanks everyone. Um, I'm from Zero Impact Solutions. Um, so the applications are due on the 30th of October. Do we have any um, like hour? You think you'll be uh, opening up the gates? Any time frame? Um, we, uh, I'm going to go ahead and direct that to Nicole if uh, we can give anything more um, specific on that. For launch on October 30th, we'll be putting up the Apply back Now button by noon, um, but it may occur earlier in the morning. We don't have a specific hour that's scheduled, but the Apply Now button will be up by noon of October 30th. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, great, continuing on. Um, our next caller with a question is Guy Petroborg. Um, Guy, you have been unmuted. Good morning, Guy Petroborg, Monterey Regional Waste Management District, a California special district public entity that does produce its own power and wanted to confirm eligibility that uh, the power produced can be utilized for powering uh, the chargers and the, the district uh, appropriately compensated. Uh, Guy, this is Andy Hoskinson with CSD. Just to make sure I understand your question properly, as um, a producer of your own power, you have sites where you may place electric vehicle chargers. And your question related to that is whether that you would be an eligible applicant, number one, because of that. Um, the answer to that would be uh, yes, you, you would. Um, if I understood the second part of your question, you didn't. You asked if you would be um, compensated for that power and if, am I understanding that second part of the question correctly? Yeah, it's um, that would be the second part is not it's that the compensation for the power usage um, uh, you know as the power provider that we'd be interested in, in being the, the party compensated for providing that power. Okay, if there are, um, so with the installation of UV chargers uh, on your service where you're providing service, um, there is no requirement, but there's also no restriction or Cali VIP that the end users, the electric vehicle drivers um, could be charged for the service of, of, re, of recharging their vehicle. Um, and the, uh, the, the, there's no controls from Cali VIP on, on where or how that revenue is um, collected. And I will note Cali VIP in general has no um, uh, rebate or incentives for um, covering what I'll call operational costs such as the um, cost, of, uh, cost of the electricity consumed. Okay, yeah, that, that answers my question. I was more concerned on the eligibility than on the backside. 
Okay, great. Uh, we're gonna, we've got a lot of questions still. Um, we're gonna go ahead and continue on. We're gonna go ahead and move to Frederick Polanco. Frederick, you have been unmuted. Please ask your question. Yes, uh, Frederick Polanco with uh, Direct Solar in the Central Valley. I've got clients in the uh, Santa Cruz County area that are wanting um, the VB chargers, and that's what we do here in the Central Valley. Um, I'm wondering if uh, if your uh, program allows stacking funds, and then also in the San Joaquin Valley, it's San Joaquin Valley Air Quality Control Board who offers other incentives. Is there another entity there in um, Santa Cruz and Monterey that offer uh, these extra incentives? Yeah, and Sage, um, was that a question you'd like to um, answer regarding the uh, Air District and their program? Um, hi, this is Sage. Uh, I can't really speak to um, the Air District's program um, myself, that would be something that you'd have to uh, reach out to them about. Yeah, and what I can, they do have a separate program, um, Frederick. Um, I'll just note that the um, the Air District uh, covering the territory does have a uh, separate uh, program. It is, um, I think, a little smaller uh, in scope than the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District district charge up um, program, um, but it would be something that uh, if your site met all of the requirements of Cali DFD, we would allow stacking with there. Fantastic. That's what I needed. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we will uh, we will continue on. Um, the next uh, caller of the question is Philippe Lopes. Uh, Philippe, um, do you have a, a question for us? Hello? Hello? Hello. We can hear you. Yes, sorry. Um, actually, my name is not Felipe, it's Duarte Ferreira. I am uh, calling from Europe in Portugal. We are uh, FSEC and a uh, large world provider of uh, DC fast charges and AC fast charges. I just had a question. Uh, we usually apply for these programs with partners uh, that we have in California, given our installed base, but we also offer to all the callers that uh, there was somebody asking the difference between DC fast charging and AC fast charging. I was wondering whether Cal EVIP has, uh, because we are a qualified vendor, uh, has a list of contacts. So if, if people want to contact us in the process of uh, of preparing the the the, the bid uh, for 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 this process, which is uh, manageable, um, is, is is there a contact list? Because we had some changes in the organization, and I wanted to upload the new contacts so that people can the bid the, the property owners can contact us in case they need in technical information, engineering support, and some, some, some also simulation on total cost of ownership for the infrastructure, because we can do that. Is that possible? That's fantastic. Uh, that's fantastic, Felipe. Yes. If you're, and I apologize, uh, I don't know that I caught the name of your organization, but um, if F you're not yet, uh, sorry, what was it? Hey, FASEC. I'm writing it down as we speak over there. Okay. In the, in the dialogue box. Hey, here. Oh, FSEC. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, fantastic. So, yes, uh, please uh, reach out to us on the uh, central coast cali at Energy Center uh, email. We will um, reach back out to you and get your information updated for the cali DIP Connect, which is, again, yes. the way that any of those interested here. Uh, interest in the project to reach out to you for support. Okay, so I will I will give you the names of the people and the team. Also, is it possible to have a list of the people th that participated in this conference call, a webinar? Uh, no, that no. is not something that uh, we provide. Okay. But again, if you are listed, and I'm, to all the callers that are looking for assistance, there are um, a number of vendors uh, such as SXX who are listed on Cali DIP Connect and are more than happy to help you with your project. Okay. Moving on to the next caller with a question would be Chris Morello. Chris, if you're on, please feel free to ask your question. Yeah, uh, just for clarification, uh, calling from Monterey Regional Airport, in terms of the location of the chargers on airport property with 
if they were in a parking lot that that's available 24 hours a day if that's an eligible site um uh, this is andy with uh, center for sustainable energy uh, chris if you are asking in regards to level two electric vehicle charging the answer is um, yes if you're asking in regards to dc fast charging airports are listed as an eligible um, uh, an eligible site for them as well there is a requirement that the charging be available 24 um, 7 365 it sounds like you're indicating that's true if that is um, that would be an eligible site uh, as well. Okay, just because on one of the slides that it said that no long-term parking lot for the part for the airport. So I just wanted to clarify that if it wasn't a long-term parking lot, but it's available 24 hours a day, it's still eligible. Uh, it is a, sorry, you are saying it is a long-term parking, it's not short-term parking? Well, just, or a parking lot, is there a distinction between long-term and short-term? Um, for airports, uh, they are looking for the short-term uh, parking, whether it's cell or uh, quick turnover. So with the DC fast charging, um, that is not the appropriate technology. Your cost to build there and the return that you would have on that would be, um, would be a mismatch. We would encourage you in your long-term parking um, to look toward level two technology being the appropriate technology for that. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, great. Um, the next caller of the question is Eleni Petro. If you're still on, question. Hi. Gonna... Yeah, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Okay, great. I just have uh, two quick questions. One is so site verification forms are only for applicants that don't own the site, but if you do own the site, is there anything you have to submit to verify that? Or, um, is it just clicking that box? Uh, it's a great question. If you are the site owner, you're attesting um, that you are indeed the site uh, owner um, and that all of your responses uh, in the application are um, truthful and accurate. Um, so uh, we do not require an additional documentation from you if you're indicated yourself as the, the property owner. Okay, great. And then the other one is just about the funding maximum. So it's 320000 for uh, Monterey Bay. So let's just take the example that I want to go after funding for four DC fast chargers and four uh, level two in a combination application. So am I right in thinking that if, I, if it's in a disadvantaged community, I'm only eligible for funding those four DC fast chargers since that's gonna get me to 320000 but if it weren't, that I would have an extra 40,000 left over for the level two, you know, however many level twos I want. And then if, um, let's say that I did go after the maximum funding with those four DC fast chargers in a disadvantaged community, once that application had been processed, you know, and either approved or denied, I'd be allowed to get back in line for, to apply for funding for the level twos, is that correct? So that's a great question, um, and your answers to that question are actually accurate. So just to repeat what those are, um, if you if you applied in uh, Monterey, um, you could reserve up to a maximum of three hundred and twenty thousand uh, as active rebate. If you had four DC fast chargers in disadvantaged community, that would that would reach that maximum. That's correct. Um, if you apply in an area that was um, not a disadvantaged community, um, you would have an additional 40,000 um, uh, still available if you applied for, for four um, DC fast chargers. And you are correct as well that once you complete an application and, you, and it has been approved for payment, that that comes off of your active cap and you would be able to file additional applications. Again, up Great, to the cap. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and switch over to uh, those who have uh, submitted questions into the uh, chat box to be equitable here. Great. And this is Nicole Abenzeller, Project Manager at Center for Sustainable Energy. I'm going to read off some of the questions that have been submitted and uh, share answers with the group. So for Michelle Overmeyer, public 
transit operators are transitioning to electric buses. Federal requirements, however, require that these assets be secured. Additionally, it is not safe for members of the public to be driving around a bus yard. Because of these reasons, transit bus yards must be gated. We do not have a publicly accessible facility. How can public transit operators participate in Cali VIP? Is there a waiver to the requirement for the site to be publicly accessible? Great question, Michelle. So for level two charging, there are not public uh, accessibility requirements. So if you are applying for a level two charger site, you do not need to have those chargers be available to the public 24 seven or at all if, if you have restrictions around accessibility. So uh, in the case of a public transit um, operator and dealing with a, a bus yard, you would be able to apply for a level two um, site and only for level two chargers. Now, if you are able to make that site more accessible and offer 24 seven access, uh, you may be eligible for a DC fast charging, but you would have to confirm that you qualify as one of those eligible site types, such as a commercial site or a different type of site. But specifically for your type of site, I would anticipate that you could apply as a workplace site, which would be eligible for level two charging, and you would not need to meet any public access requirements. So thanks for your question. Hopefully I answered it. Um, looking at additional questions, um, there's a question from Tom White on um, how do you recommend we assess needs for chargers at MUD? And um, I will kick that question off to Andy Hoskinson at CSE, and we can also ask uh, Sage if you have any additional input after Andy's answer. Okay, um, again, the question was, are there any programs to incentivize EV purchases or leasing for disadvantaged or low-income multi-unit um, dwelling residents? So the um, uh, EV purchases for uh, the vehicle specifically, um, there is the Clean Vehicle Rebate Project um, that does offer, um, does offer incentives for purchase of new um, electric uh, vehicles. Um, and it does include uh, increased rebate for uh, low moderate income income verified uh, individuals. Um, the second question uh, was how do you recommend we assess the need for chargers at multi-unit dwelling? Um, that's a great question, Tom, and what I would direct you to is the Cali VIP site under resources, and for property owners, um, there is a, um, a description of a walkthrough of assessing um, the demand and what we have found uh, one way if you're engaged with your your property manager um, is if they can survey uh, the, the current residents um, in particular that has been a, um, a good method of assessing the interest in electric vehicles and hi, this is Sage. Just uh, to add a little bit more information about um, uh, vehicle rebates, uh, we have partnered with the Air Resources District in Monterey, and um, they are offering uh, rebates on uh, alternative fuel vehicles that are purchased from any dealer in California. Um, we have some information on our website. Um, you can also find it by Googling Monterey Bay Air Resources District. Um, it can be $1,000 for a battery electric vehicle or $2,000 if it's um, if the person who's applying is low income. Um, our website also has a number of resources that can help you find uh, you know, state rebates, um, learn about the federal tax credit, um, and just kind of see what else is out there and what you might be eligible for. So feel free to check out our website at mbcp.org. Great, thanks for that additional information, Sage. Um, so additional questions from the question box from Gabriel Susco Lopata. Does applying obligate the applicant to build EV charging? Or can the application be withdrawn later if the project is canceled? Uh, I can take that question. Um, so Gabriel, uh, Applying does not obligate the applicant to build the EV charging infrastructure. Of course, that's the hope and the intention of the project. But if for some reason something does not work out with your 
plans, that installation is not going to be possible, we just ask that you communicate with staff here. So, for example, if, uh, if something goes through but your funds have already been reserved, we ask that you contact staff at our project phone number or email address, which is up on the screen, to notify us that that application needs to be canceled because your project is not moving forward. Um, in addition, if you have something that's slowing down your process and you expect that you won't be able to complete the installation within the required performance period, we also ask that you be proactive and communicate with our project staff so we can provide you with guidance and support so that you can successfully complete your project and, and um, grant you an extension if needed. Now, extensions are on a case-by-case -case basis, but we do appreciate um, you communicating proactively if you are going to experience an expected cancellation or you need an extension for your performance period. So thanks for your question, Gabriel. Um, so looking at additional questions, um, I've got a question from Jay Friedland. Hi, Jay Friedland from Grid Change. Um, is an office building parking lot not gated or restricted along a major retail street eligible for DC fast charging? Now, Jay, um, we'd want to take a closer look at the, the site that you have in mind. Um, off the bat, unless it's a commercial site, that qualifies as one of our eligible DC fast charging sites. Um, it may not be eligible for DC fast charging, but with more information, we can put you in the right direction and let you know if it's going to be eligible. So uh, if you have that installation address available, I advise that you reach out to us either on uh, our phone number or email, and we can determine if that's going to be qualified as an eligible DC fast charger site. Um, when in doubt, for a lot of sites, we have more flexibility around level two charging. So uh, just right off the bat, an office building sounds like a workplace. So you might be eligible for level two charging. But please reach out with more information around that specific installation site so we can guide you on eligibility. So you know what to expect when applications become available on October 30th. Just scanning through our other additional questions. We've received a ton of great questions through our question box, and I know we only have about 10 minutes left, so I will be asking anyone that hasn't received an answer to their question to please reach out. Please take note of our email address here um, and reach out to us via email with any questions we are unable to get to, and please use the subject line CCIP webinar follow-up. That will help us field those questions and provide you answers as soon as possible. Uh, this week and, and going into next week uh, as needed so that you have all of your questions answered before launch day on October 30th. Question about um, when the presentation will be available and, and just to say it again, this presentation will be available um, online after this webinar and is expected to be available tomorrow. So if anyone needs to become familiar with the content again, or do you want to share any this information or make sure that you've got your questions answered, um, you can find this webinar uh, available online on our docket and, and it will be emailed to all registered attendees. So um, you'll find that directly in your inbox soon. Um, okay, so another question from Kristen um, Mall. Excuse me for the mispronunciation. Um, can you describe more about California government or California-based affiliates for eligibility requirements? For example, if Seaside City works with homeowners for curbside charging in parking areas near the high school and other par popular parking areas, would that be eligible? Also, Seaside City is expanding our accessory dwelling unit laws to increase housing. Do homes with ADUs count as multi-unit dwellings or do they need to be a business? And I'll kick this question over to Andy for a response. Okay, great. So the first part of that question um, relates to uh, the example of Seaside City working with homeowners for curbside charging. So looking at curbside charging, 
Um, curbside charging is an option for either level two or DC fast charging. For the curbside uh, level two charging, um, it is eligible if the charging is going in um, a block I, where on either side of, of that road within that block, there uh, is an eligible site, such as a workplace um, uh, and a high school, um, as described in the question, um, would, uh, would qualify for that. For DC fast charging, if you were looking at that technology, um, again, curbside charging is allowed, um, but it needs to be placed uh, curbside within a block where one of the eligible DC fast charge um, uh, businesses or uses are located. Um, the example here with the high school, that would not be eligible, but again, I would ask you to consult the implementation manual that's available for download on the webpage um, and to, to look at the list when you're considering where, to, um, where DC fast charging curbside might be allowed. Uh, the second part of the question is, do homes with accessory dwelling units count as multi-unit dwellings, um, or do they need to be a business? Um, the answer is that single-family homes with accessory dwelling units would not qualify um, by definition as multi-unit dwellings. Um, within, again, the implementation manual that's available for download, there is a, uh, is a definition for multi-unit dwelling um, that at its Core includes at least three units in one building on a property um, to be eligible as a multi-unit dwelling. Great. Thanks for that response, Andy. So I think we have time for one more question before I wanted to point you back to our contact information available on the screen right now. But this question is from John Schott. Um, can you please clarify how many DC fast chargers a uh, single applicant can apply for across all three counties. So uh, per application, you can apply for up to four DC fast chargers, but we do have limits per county uh, on how many, how much funding you can reserve at one time. So as previously mentioned, the limits are 320,000 for Monterey and Santa Cruz counties and it's 100,000 for San Benito County. So you can apply for up to four DC fast charters in disadvantaged communities in both Monterey and Santa Cruz counties, but with that $100,000 limit in San Benito, you'd have to make a decision on how you want to reserve that money because you would be unable to apply for more than one DC fast charger given that limit. So you could do a combo of a DC fast charger and any eligible level two chargers up to that $100,000 limit or uh, a, a DC fast charger and then potentially uh, a reduced DC, fast, a second DC fast charger. Typically what we do is if you apply for more than the limit, we will work with you on that application so we can determine what combination of chargers you are prioritizing and uh, and help guide you through the application process to support that. And again, these limits are based off of your TIN. So if you're applying for the same organization, um, we are enforcing these limits based on your tax identification number. If you are an EV service provider or someone else who's applying for a variety of businesses, um, you could direct your, your businesses to apply uh, for the rebate themselves because each business um, has their own tax identification number and therefore has their own limit. So uh, please reach out if you have additional questions about that, John, as you're navigating the application process with your potential customers. Um, and with that, I know we only have a couple minutes left, so I want to direct your attention to the screen and uh, highlight the different ways you can get in touch with us. First up, um, you can contact our project staff uh, now, anytime before our project launch, or anytime after at our number at 831-622-9600 or our email address at central-coach-calivip at energycenter.org. 
If you have any questions or any doubts about your eligibility or uh, want to have a clear understanding of any requirements, we always encourage you to reach out before applying. Please reach out to us and we can help clarify any requirements, help answer those questions ahead of launch date. Applications open October 30th by noon, um, and more project details are available online right now, including that site verification form that can help put you on the fast track. So we always encourage you to fill that out um, in advance if you can. And then you can also subscribe for Cali VIP news and project updates at calivip.org backslash, backslash contact us. Um, that's just a great way to sign up for more Cali VIP news. So if you're doing business throughout the state and want to know where we're coming to next, you can find out that information um, when it becomes available as a Cali VIP subscriber. Again, we want to thank you for attending today and note that we will be making this presentation available to you. Uh, if your question was not answered, please reach out to us and we can work through any questions and answers um, offline. Thank you again to Divya, Sage, Andy, and Sophie behind the scenes for running this webinar. Thank you all for attending and have a great day.